Hey there, this is Tatiana from kawaiidrawings.com, where you can learn to draw faster and with more confidence. In this tutorial, I will show you how to turn your drawings into finished products. It's deeply satisfying to see your work on real life products, but this design has a special meaning to me as well. I'm still in the early stages of my business, so it reminds me that the seeds I plant today will blossom into beautiful trees of tomorrow. Okay, so I have my design sketch and we created the drawings in the earlier videos. So let's put them together and create a design for a zip pouch. To do that, I will need to create a design as a rectangle. Taking a quick peek at the sketch again, I see that there is an acorn in the center surrounded by a circle of leaves. Okay, so that's exactly what we'll do. We'll put the acorn right in the center and add a circle of smaller leaves around it, followed by a circle of larger leaves. And now that we have our master plan, let's jump into Photoshop and actually do it. Step one is to create a new file and let's name it acorn pouch template. Then set the width and height, but what should they be? I've decided to use Redbubble as a print on demand platform for this product. So I'll jump over to their website and check the dimensions for bags and pouches. Okay, so it says here 4600 by 3000 pixels. So let's make our file exactly that size. Click create and we are ready to do the design. I will bring down horizontal and vertical guides and put them right in the center so I know exactly where to place the designs. Next let's make a layer for the background. We'll make a new layer, fill it with white and rename it BG for background. Great, we're ready for the artwork. Instead of just pasting the images, I'm going to go to file place linked and select the file that I want. This way I can resize it as many times as I want and not lose any quality. And also if I ever update the artwork in the original file, the changes will come into this file automatically. Okay, so I resize the acorn until it looks about right and go to file place linked again to add the leaves in the same way. Once that's done, I will select all the layers that contain leaf artwork and I will press Command G to group them. This way I can resize them and move them around all at once, which again makes my workflow faster and more efficient and it will do the same for you. Okay, so I used Command T to resize the leaves and now I'm going to move them around in a circular pattern to create the design I have planned. At this point I'm doing it by eye to keep a little bit of wonder and imperfections in the design. Then later I will use a guide to finalize it and tweak it. Uh oh, I've used all the leaves. So now I'm going to copy and paste the existing leaves, turning them and moving them around to complete the design. There is no science to this part. My goal is to keep the design interesting and varied. So I just step back and say, hmm, what would look good here? Okay, the first circle of leaves is done. Now we'll repeat the same process, but to keep things interesting, let's flip some of the leaves. The second circle of leaves is much bigger. Some of the leaves will even run off the page, but that's fine, that's part of the pattern. I want to create the feeling that there is a big wind and there are all these leaves flying around and there is this brave little acorn in the middle, smiling no matter what happens. Again, I'm doing this by eye for now. And then once all the leaves are in place, I will refine the design. The second circle of leaves is done, but now I need to fill the funny empty spaces in the corners and on the sides. So I make more copies of the leaves, resize them and move them around to fill up the gaps. But instead of making the leaves fly out from the center, like I did for the first and second circle, I'm going to point the leaves inside this time, which helps to draw the viewer's eye into the design and makes for a stronger design statement. This is a neat little trick you can use in your designs and doodles to make sure that your drawing looks interesting and draws the eye in. Okay, all the leaves are in place now. It's time to draw a guide and check our design and tweak it as needed. So I draw a circular shape around the acorn, 
fill it with black and drop the opacity way down to 25%. I will use this circle as a reference so I know how far from the acorn I need to position the leaves. Actually, everything looks pretty good, I'm just going to move them around a little bit to make things consistent. The goal here is to keep the same amount of space around each leaf. Okay, that looks good, let's export the file. We'll jump back to Redbubble website to check which file formats they accept. So it says JPEG, PNG or GIF. I'm gonna opt for PNG because this file format will give me the best quality. Go to File, Export, Save for Web and choose PNG as your preset. Here you can also change the image size if you need to, but ours is already the right size. So I press Save and Save again to export the file. And here it is! The first design is all done and ready to be uploaded to Redbubble. To turn into real life products that I and other people can enjoy. To remind us that the seeds we plant today will bear fruit for years to come. I am so excited to share this with you and to see what beautiful designs you will create. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me and I will see you again soon.